Hi there, this is my response to your bullet block experiment and I think I have a solution. <clears throat> Basically what's happening is that the bullet is losing less energy to friction and therefore heat uh, when it's hitting the block off center. Um, just for an intuitive picture what one could think is happening. Um, if this is our block, when the bullet hits it off center it the bullet feels like it's hitting something lighter right um, this is not entirely like correct or anything but it's just an intuitive picture and if the bullet feels like it's hitting something that's lighter then you can think of the off-center impact as a non-elastic impact with something that has less mass and if you just do the maths, you can see that the energy lost is less. But that's, but that's not really a justification of exactly how much energy we lose when it hits it off-center. So what I have here basically is the derivation of that thing. And now I'm going to present it. But first, for the people who haven't seen the derivation of a non-elastic collision, I'm going to do that here, just a simple linear non-elastic collision and then I'm going to do the rotational thing. Okay, this is the non-elastic linear collision. There's nothing special here. P's momentum is energy and you can clearly see that if we hit something lighter we lose less energy. And that's sort of what's happening with the real thing but let's just do the proper derivation. Okay, let's start this thing. Now, first of all, here I assume that the block is one-dimensional. We're only really interested in its horizontal uh, dimension, just because we only need horizontal distances from the center of mass or whatever point we are taking angular momentums about, uh, because the bullet is traveling in the vertical direction. So that's all we need. Okay, we assume that the bullet has mass little m, and it's traveling with speed v, it hits the block a distance x from the center of mass of the block, and the block has mass big M and moment of inertia I naught around its center of mass. Okay, so before the impact, we have that Pb is the momentum of the bullet, it's just mv, and the kinetic energy of the bullet Eb is just a half mv squared, as we all know. Now, after the impact, the first thing to consider, and it's very important, that the center of mass has moved. This is really crucial because otherwise we would get strange uh, things. Okay, so we need to find the uh, place of the new center of mass and we call the distance of the new center of mass from the original center of mass y. Okay, uh, it's straightforward to see that y should be little m over the sum of the two masses times x. You can check Wikipedia or whatever to uh, see this. And after that, uh, we can just apply linear momentum conservation to find, that the vertical sp to find the vertical speed of the whole block with a bullet in it. Um, the physics here clearly tells us that the two blocks should go up the same height regardless of x, the distance from the center, uh, which is fine, like this is what we need, but now let's actually find the energy and see if everything's alright there. Okay, from angular momentum conservation, uh, we can find that the angular momentum of the bullet around the new center of mass, we need the new center of mass, because that's uh, how the body, the body will be spinning around its center of mass, which is not the center of mass of the block, but it's actually the center of mass of the system of a block and a bullet. So, we find that LB, which is the angular momentum of the bullet and actually of the whole system, it's mv times the distance from the new center of mass, which is x minus y, and with a little bit of math, we get that this angular momentum is the product of the masses over the sum of the masses times v times, v times x, and this is also the moment of inertia of the body times its angular velocity. Now, the moment of inertia here 
is first we firstly we apply the parallel axis theorem to get that the moment of inertia of the block around the new center of mass would be i naught plus big n times y squared and the moment of inertia of the bullet will be m times x minus y squared that's fine and we move on to the next sheet here we can just write down the, the total energy which is the linear kinetic energy plus the angular kinetic energy would be p squared over twice the mass plus l squared over twice the moment of inertia where the moment of inertia is that ugly thing we had on the last sheet but if you just simplify it a bit you can get this nice i naught plus the product of the masses over the sum of the mass times x squared which is fine then we can clearly see that on the next line that firstly the linear kinetic energy does not depend on x this is what we already had because the speed did not depend on x and then we have the rotational kinetic energy which clearly depends on x now if we pull out a half mv squared out uh, as you remember this is the kinetic energy of the bullet before the impact we get a half mv squared times something in brackets now what we need to show that this something in brackets is always less than or equal to one because that's what conservation of energy would apply the energy of the brick and a bullet after the impact is less than the kinetic energy of the bullet in the beginning because we've lost a little bit of energy to friction, heat, deformation, stuff like that. Okay, so we have two terms in the brackets. The first one is straightforward. The second one, we can think of it as something times x squared over something, pl over something plus something times x squared. Here I've called it k, and it's ax squared over b plus cx squared. Now, if you think about, the, if you think about this as a function of x, you can see that, first of all, if x is 0, k is 0. Which is, if you do the maths for the non-rotational thing, this is exactly what you'll get if the bullet impacts straight in the center. But, uh, as x increases, k increases also, but it asymptotically approaches a over c from below. So, we have that k is always less than a over c. Now, what is a over c in this case? we can just write it out and find that A over C is big M over the sum of the masses. Therefore, the total energy of the block with a bullet in it is always less than a half mv squared times the term we already had, which is unchanged, the first one, plus the maximum value of the second term. And when you add those up, you just get 1. So, the energy of the body after the impact is always less than the initial energy of the bullet. And there you go. Energy conservation. You always lose energy to friction and deformation. You never gain energy. And the block always goes up to the same height. And that's it. It's actually a really cool problem. I like it. And thanks, Derek. This was fun.